Gate 2023, Fluid Mechanics is what I am going to discuss in this specific lecture, in this specific video. Although we have discussed Fluid Mechanics questions in Gate 2023 live when the exam responses were coming, right? Right after the exam. So you can check the channel in the live video. I have already discussed 2-3 questions. Even I have discussed some of the tricks in those questions, right? But obviously, till that time, we had not received all questions. We could not verify all questions. That is why some questions could not be discussed. Those are easy questions only. So in this video, one by one, we are going to discuss all those questions. Even if you know the answer of all of them, even if you know the solution of all of them, still I recommend that you watch it because I might be telling some extra uh, tips, some uh, numerical solving skills in those questions, which will help you in your further exams. Got it? Please remember, these are memory-based questions. So far, actual response URL is not out yet, which means the wording of the question may slightly vary. The data of the question may slightly vary. As a result of that, the solution process may change. The answer may change, right? But given the wordings, if I assume that these are going to be the wordings of the question, very similar to question and data is also same, then answer also will match. Otherwise, process definitely you can check. So that's why I recommend you that do not miss even a single question that I am discussing in this video. Make sure to watch it till the end. If there is some question which you have seen earlier, then you can watch it 2x or 1.5x, your choice. But make sure that you do not miss any single question. Before I start discussing questions one by one, let me talk about two scenarios. Scenario number one and scenario number two. In scenario number one, what happens that gate was on that year on a slightly higher difficulty level. Let's say gate 2022, gate 2022, which was slightly higher in difficulty level. Questions were, uh, you know, there were many questions which were good, which uh, students uh, felt complex, which they were not able to solve. And on the other hand, there is a second situation, second scenario where gate is not that difficult. There are certain good questions, but the number of those questions is not higher. Or overall difficulty level is comparatively moderate in comparison to the difficult paper. Now, as an institute, exergic or as a teacher myself, how do I feel in those situations? Let me tell you. Situation number one, when gate level is higher and there are in fact many questions which are directly from any of the exergic courses which I have taught, which I have discussed. It feels very happy correct? because everyone is saying question paper was difficult, questions were tricky and then you realize that array, man, many of the things I have already discussed directly, indirectly, right? You don't, then you feel very happy, correct? Even when gate is tougher, it happened. But when same thing happens in 2023 or an exam which was not that difficult, which was easy to moderate or somewhat moderate in difficulty level, that many questions are from the courses. How do you feel? It does not feel that happy. Although number of questions that are in gate 2023, which are directly from exergic courses, just by a slight change of data, slight change of language is higher, a lot higher. Still in gate 2023, I am not feeling very happy and proud to say, hey, dekho, so many questions are from courses. Why? Because question level itself was not that difficult, right? Moderate questions, easy to moderate questions, right? What's the fun if all those questions match up with the course, right? So the question says that the velocity field of a certain 2D flow, two-dimensional flow is given by this expression. Velocity, which is depending upon x and y coordinates because it's a 2D flow is k multiplied by x i cap minus y j cap. Got it? So in vector form velocity has been given. The velocity component along x direction is kx and the velocity component along y direction is minus ky j cap. Correct? But since k you can take out as common, that's why you can write it like this. k is a constant as mentioned uh, uh, ahead of that where k is a constant which has a value of 2 per second okay and the coordinates x and y are in meters so which gives you a feel that velocity is in meter per second correct if 
kx is there and k is in per second, k is in per second and x is in meter. So velocity is in meter per second. You need to be careful. Always remember whenever you have been given expressions like this, whatever subject, whatever subject, you will see such expressions. Such means some expression defined in terms of some other variables. Always check the units. Whether that term is having a unit in standard unit or it is kilo, whatever, kilo pascal, giga pascal, mega pascal. So be careful of units wherever such equations are given to you. Okay. There will be some cases where individual constant unit may not be given. But they will tell you that entire expression will have a value in kilometer per second. Somewhere in the question they will mention. So point being, be careful of units. Especially when you have such expression, check it carefully ki kya, what units have been given for each and every component. Okay? Now, the coordinates x and y are in meters. Already uh, read that. Assuming gravitational effect to be negligible. Gravitational effects are negligible. If density of fluid is 1000 kg per meter cube and pressure at origin, at origin, what is origin? 0,0. .0. Pressure at origin is 100 kilopascal. How much is the pressure at 2 meter, 2 meter in kilopascal? That's what question is asking you. So in a flow field, it has given you density of the fluid. It has given you pressure at a specific point. It has given you the expression of velocity. And now it is asking you pressure at some other point. So basically, two points you can consider. One, the given point at the origin where pressure is known. At the origin, velocity also you can find from this expression, put x and y, 0 and 0. So at origin, you know pressure given, you can easily find out velocity. And at the other point, 2 comma 2 meters, you have been given nothing. It is asking you pressure. But velocity you can find, na? put in place of x, put 2 in place of y, put 2. So it gives you a feel, ki yaar, it's just a simple question, which is asking you to apply Bernoulli's equation, right? Although you can solve it by Euler's equation as well. Eventually, you know, once you integrate Euler's equation, you reach Bernoulli's equation. So, there is not much of a fundamental difference between them when it comes to solving such questions. You can solve, get the answer from both. But since I am sure uh, we are more comfortable in applying Bernoulli's equation, so I will go ahead with that. Now, in this question, there are two different answers that students are getting. I will talk about that. Once I get the answer, I will tell you what other answer you might be getting. Okay. So, let's start solving the question. Firstly, it's good to just draw the origin first. Draw the flow field first. Right. Point A, let's say, is the origin. B is the point 2, 2. At the origin, pressure is 100. Correct. And moving ahead to find out the velocity at the origin means x and y both are 0. So, put 0 and 0 here. Right. Right here. 0 i cap. 0 j cap. So, eventually velocity is 0. Correct? At origin. Coming to velocity at b, what we can find out? Put the value of 2 comma 2. Correct? So, here you will write 2 i cap, 2 j cap, minus 2 j cap. So, this is the expression of velocity that you have got. Why? Because k value is equal to 2. So, this is the velocity expression. If I talk about the magnitude of velocity, how much would be that? Because we require magnitude of velocity, right? In the Bernoulli's equation, I also already told you the thought process, already told you the direction in which we want to go. We want to go into the, in the direction of Bernoulli. Bernoulli is an energy equation, correct? Energy equation or you can say energy equation per unit mass, you can define it in so many different ways, right? In energy equation, velocity is going to come where? Where? Where we will consider the kinetic head. There it's a scalar quantity, although it has been represented as a vector right now, but eventually while we will be using this in Bernoulli's equation, that's the energy equation, which is a scalar quantity. Energy is not a vector quantity in the Bernoulli equation. That is why, although I know the expression, individual expression of velocity in x component, in y component, but for Bernoulli's, I require its magnitude. That only I will put there. How to find out magnitude? Root over 4 square plus 4 square, right? Which is 4 root 2 meter per second. So this is the magnitude of velocity of B at point B. So here, pressure is given, velocity we found out here, velocity we found out, pressure question is asking us. 
What a simple question. Just apply the Bernoulli's equation. Applying Bernoulli's equation, this is the equation that we have. Before applying it, obviously we are going to do some simplification which we generally do in Bernoulli's equation. What would be that? This velocity term is 0, correct? This velocity term is 0, Va is 0, Va is 0, right? What else? What about Z is ZB? What should we do about that? Now, this is a point where some students may do silly mistakes, some. Suppose you have this diagram, what they will think? Sir, ZB, if we consider, if we consider this as the datum, sir, then ZA is equal to 0, sir, and ZB is equal to 2, sir. That's what some students would do, correct? And they would put the same here and they'll get wrong answer. Why? Are bhai, because question has mentioned na, that you have to ignore the gravitational effects. Negligible gravitational effects are there. But they will forget to think that gravitational effect is linked with the Z value, right? That's why derivation is going to be helpful for you. That's why if you recall the derivation that we discussed, from Euler's differential equation, this was the expression, correct? This was the expression, where this is the term, this is the term which is re representing the gravitational effect. Just recall, recall the derivation, consider the streamline, along the streamline we balance the forces. This is the gravitational effect, correct? Which is being considered here. If that is negligible, that's not to be considered, then this term itself is not going to be there. So basically Z term here, is representing the gravitational effect. That is the effect of datum. Bhai. What is the effect of datum? Gravitational effect only. Na? The difference in their potential only. Na? That you have to ignore if gravitational effects are being ignored. Correct? So this is something which I feel some students would have missed. So definitely answer would get wrong in that situation. But anyway, so these, these, and these, these three terms are being ignored. So all we have is this is equal to this too. Correct? This let me just neglect gravitational effect, which means this. Upon simplifying, you will get this. As I told you, VA would be 0 again. So, this is the term that you will get. Okay. Here, what do you have to find out? You have to find out PB. So, PB by rho. So, PB by rho is equal to PA by rho minus VB square by 2. Correct. And if you multiply everything with rho, with density, you will get PB is equal to PA minus rho VB square by 2. Correct. And now you just have to put the values. PA is 100 kilopascal. Correct. Pressure at origin, 100 kilopascal. PA, 100 kilopascal. So that value we are putting here, 100 kilopascal means 100 multiplied by 1000 pascal. Density is 1000. Velocity at B is 4 root 2. So square of 4 root 2 is 32 divided by 2. Solve it, you will get the answer in Pascal. Divide it with 1000, you will get the answer in kilopascal. That's it. Your answer for this question is 84 kilopascal if these units, these data, this language is correct. Now, some students are getting an answer, 90, 92, something like that. There is a possible silly mistake which can get you that answer. But I am not sure how many of you will do that silly mistake. I feel very few students would do that silly mistake. That's why I am not discussing it here. Because in a question, there are 10 types of silly mistakes na, that student can do. I discuss, you know, I try to discuss those which will be done by at least 10-20% students, right? Like a mistake like this, a mistake like this in datum. I am sure 10-20% have done this mistake. But there is one more silly mistake here which 1 or 2% would have done. That's why and it will take some time to discuss that. That's why I am not right now discussing it here in this video. If you did not get the answer as 84, you get, you got the answer as something like 90, 92, 94, something like that. Then there is a silly mistake possible. That I will discuss in a separate video. But for that you need to comment and tell me if you got this as the answer or if you got some other answer. That will give me an idea. Accordingly, I will make a separate video in detail where I will discuss that silly mistake. Okay. Make sure to comment and tell me. Yes, sir, I got 84 as the answer. No, sir, I did not get 84 as the answer. I got 94 or 92. Whatever is your answer for this question, make sure to comment it. I will be reading each and every comment and accordingly will take the decision to make that video. So make sure that you comment. Coming to the next question. This is a question that I have already discussed in the live video. Correct? I am not repeating that explanation here because there itself I discussed it in a decent manner. 
so this explanation will be quicker generally i ex i would have explained this in 10 15 minutes but since already it has been explained for 5 10 minutes so i am not repeating that here i will be quickly explaining it air given kinematic vis uh, density is given kinematic viscosity nu is given to you flowing over a flat plate with a free stream velocity 2 meter per second given wall shear stress at a location 15 mm from the leading edge is tau w what is the wall shear stress at a location 30 mm from the leading edge so you have such setup flat plate setup and over it air is flowing obviously there will be a generation of boundary layer over that it has question has given you that at 15 mm 15 mm from the leading edge this is the leading edge shear stress right the wall shear stress is tau w how much it would be at twice of that distance when in place of 50 mm you have 30 mm so if this length was l if this length was l if this length was l this length here is 2 l so what happens with the tau w this is the question which it is asking you as i already told you in the live that i discussed this question does not require you to even lift the pen you can directly click the answer and move ahead now to solve this question you don't require any of the data that's why i erased it just by looking at the options you can get the answer you can tick the answer and get full marks within seconds how if you recall the discussion that we have done regarding boundary layer regarding the value of wall shear stress in boundary layer we know that it decreases when we move away from the leading edge suppose this is tau w1 right, right now it is tau w let's say it is tau w1 here also write 1 1 1 1 okay it doesn't matter and this is tau w2 then tau w2 would be lower than tau w1 why because of the change in velocity gradient correct here velocity has to reach from zero to free stream velocity in this short distance but here it has to reach free stream velocity in longer distance so the gradient itself at the wall is going to change which will decrease the value of wall shear stress the rubbing effect which would decrease tau w2 in comparison to tau w1 so this is for sure this is a concept which we have conceptually discussed I also numerically showed you how the value of velocity gradient, which one would be higher, how tau w is going to change. So I am not repeating all of that here. So tau w2 is less than tau w. What do you have to find out? Tau w2, right? Which, which is the value at 30 mm. Which one do you think will be eligible for that? That at 30 mm, the value of tau w is going to be lower than tau w1. Option D is saying that at 30 mm, it would be root 2 times of tau w1. Wrong? Because it is higher. It says that at 30 mm, it would be twice. At 30 mm, shear stress would be twice of its value at 15 mm. Obviously, this is also more. Not possible because this value needs to be lower than this value. Right? Option C says that it will be half. So, chalo. You cannot just ignore it or remove it. It, is, it was giving higher value. It's not giving higher value. It is saying that tau w2 will be half of tau w1. So it is lower than tau w1, which is right. But will it be half? Distance is getting doubled and shear stress is getting halved. That's what it is saying. Again wrong. We know that shear stress does not vary linearly like that. That is why the only option possible is option A, which says that at 30 mm stress shear stress would be lower correct because it is it is 1 by root 2 times of shear stress at 15 mm and it is also not showing you a linear variation like option c three options eliminated just by using the concepts you would get the right answer as this option tau w by root 2 or tau w1 by root 2 that's it but still if this does not click you I am quickly showing you the solution. I am not discussing. I have already discussed the solution once in the live lecture. Correct. So once you finish this entire uh, lecture, if you want, if you cannot solve it by the regular method, definitely you can try and check the solution in that video. But Consider a unidirectional flow with velocity field given by this expression. So it's a unidirectional flow. Question is saying it is a unidirectional flow means in a single direction where 
although it is showing that velocity as a general expression we can write it is a you know function of space and time space means x y z and time means t but it is not in all the three dimensions it is a unidirectional flow only in x direction and obviously it may depend upon time that's the mathematical way of representing that it is a unidirectional flow that in general velocity you represent by x y z or t but here it is just depending upon x and t so it's unidirectional it's not depending upon y not upon z getting so that's why whenever you get such expression don't start frightening kya rahe ye kya aagaya what question has given just try to figure out slowly what question has given what does that mean y is not there z is not there it is saying unidirectional so basically it is just telling you that velocity exists only along x direction i cap also is written there which tells you the same thing now here it gave you where u 0 t is equal to 1 what does that mean that when x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 u is equal to 1 that's what it is telling you that's what it is telling you that velocity is given by u x t at u 0 t u is equal to 1 at 0 comma t u is equal to 1 means at x is equal to 0 u is equal to 1 whatever will be the value of time but at x is equal to 0 it will remain 1 only it further says that if special homogeneous density varies with time as this special what is this recall even if you are weak in english let's say you have covered aptitude right in aptitude you have this special aptitude i am sure it was explained by madhurima ma'am what does this word means right in three dimension in space right although this is a word which is a very much technical word but still still if you could not figure out i am sure this word you would have listened at some point or the other during the preparation so in three dimensional that that's what it means in the space so in the space homogeneous density varies with the time as this this is the expression of how density varies with time 1 plus 0.2 e to the power minus t you can see a function of time time changes density changes so it's a function of time it does not change with position that at point a it is something else at point b it is something else at point c it is something else it's not like that situation is homogeneous but with the time it changes everywhere at all the points got it so it's only a function of time not a function of space further it says find out the value of u2 comma 1 u2 comma 1 means what is the value of velocity when x is equal to 2 but time is 1 that is what question is asking you remember it's a thing here what you can apply i won't even ask you to recall think what what expression can you apply here what you have been given in the question what question is asking you question is asking you to relate density and velocity these are the two things in this question right density and velocity these are the two things that question is asking you to relate what expression would you use for that there is no pressure term there is because it's a flow field you can assume that let's try applying bernoulli's equation and all but no pressure term is given here nothing mentioned about neglig uh, uh, negligible gravitational effect or datum what would you do here you have to relate density and velocity think continuity equation by the generalized continuity equation has these terms only the generalized the very first the largest expression of continuity equation that we discussed has these terms only right and time also i missed mentioning time sorry i missed mentioning time time also is there that will give you even more idea that only these three terms are going to be there in terms of x y and z right it's about flow it's about change of density with respect to time and asking you the value of velocity at a certain point at a certain time why would you not use continuity equation and here you can simplify easily in the v and w are zero right so these and these terms would be gone you would have just this term and in this term also in this term also density is it a function of time is it a function of space no it is only depending upon time not depending upon x value so it actually is a constant if you are differentiating with respect to x density actually is a constant and here it will exist with respect to time yes it will not be a constant you will differentiate that with respect to time now coming to the value of del u by del x how do you find out del u by del x del u by del x means how u will change with respect to x do you know that nahi bhai question only mentioned that at u when x is 0 u is 
And when x is 2, how much would be the u? That's what question is asking you. Question has not given you any expression. Question has not given you that why u is varying like this. An expression which you can differentiate. What else can you do? If you don't know the exact variation, if you cannot find out this value directly in the lack of an expression, there is no other way to simplify it like this. Again, something which we do in multiple topics of mechanical engineering, where exact differential is not known to us, we simplify it by taking the delta part of it, correct? Especially when the units are not that large. We have done that already in fluid mechanics, fluid properties, remember? So here, what is delta u by delta x? Delta u by delta x means u2 minus u1 divided by what is delta x? x2 minus x1. Let's say this is point 1. Let's say x, this is x1 is equal to 0 and u1 is equal to 1. When x1 is 0, u1 is 1 and when x2 is equal to 2, here, when x2 is equal to 2, how much is u2? That's what it is asking you. Two points, two velocities, that's what it represents. Delta u of those two points, delta x of those two points. This is, you can say, the approximate value of this expression in the lack of any actual expression. So, putting the values... In this expression, this was the expression. Put the value of rho, write del u by del x is delta u by delta x. Correct? Delta u by delta x, this is the expression of rho. It was a constant here, but here you have to differentiate it. Now, firstly expanding it like I explained, u2 minus u1, x2 minus x1. Here you have differentiated it, differentiation of 1 is 0, 0 0.2 would be common, e to the power minus t would remain e to the power minus t. Got it? What do you do here? Let's put the values. For t is equal to 1. For t is equal to 1, you have to find it out. Now, why? This is 1, which was t. So, t is equal to 1. x2 is 2. x1 is 0. Right? All these values. So, here t is equal to 1. Put t is equal to 1 here. Put the value of u2. u2 is the value that you have to find out. u1 is given as 1. x2 is 2. x1 is 0. I already explained that. Here also put t is equal to 1. So, this is what you have got in the entire expression. u is the only unknown, right? So, you can just simplify it. I have done that for you. And once you do that, you are going to get this as the answer. U is equal to 1.137 meter per second. So, this again was a very doable question. This is one of the most, continuity equation is one of the most basic equations, right? I have already told you, even if you have zero clue, what do you need to do? But still in this case, you had a lot of clue from the values of density, from the terms of density and velocity, that where you need to go. The only thing where some of the students would have stuck is this step, del u by del x. How do you find that out? You need to convert that to delta u by delta x. This is the only thing which makes this question slightly good. Otherwise, it is a, I would say, very doable type of problem, not something tricky or something very difficult about this question. Coming to the next question. Again, a question which has been thoroughly discussed, nothing new about this question, nothing that you don't know, nothing that you have not solved, but still I think one third students would have done some silly mistake in this question. What are the possible silly mistakes? I will discuss them. The figure shows two fluid held by a hinged gate. The atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascal, moment per unit width, moment per unit width about the base of the hinge is how much kilonewton meter per meter? This also I told you. Why do we calculate it per meter? That also has been thoroughly discussed. 3D model I also showed you. That why rather than taking entire length, we just focus on single unit. Right? Same will be replicated again and again. So per meter, we want to find it out. That's why you can see, generally moment is represented by newton meter. Here it is kilonewton meter. But we are not finding it out for the entire length of the hinge, but only for one meter of length. That's why per meter is coming there. Already this unit has been discussed. This is not the first time that you are looking at this unit. So here, if I show you again quickly in 3D, it will be very long setup. But only on one meter, only on one meter of one meter, one meter we have to focus. Get it? Now, what else data has been given to you? What else data? Density is given. There are two fluids, rho 1 and rho 2. The on top is 1000 kg per meter cube. Makes sense. Lighter fluid would be on the top. And 1000 and 2000 kg per meter cube at the bottom. H1 is 1. H2 is the bottom one, let's say. 
which is 2. Point to be noted here is that this is the hinge. Again, I am relying on the memory of you only, right? I have been given the data that hinge is here. Which means about this point you have to find out the moment, right? Generally, the hinge questions have hinge which is about the top point, correct? As a result of which you have a habit of taking the moment about this point. I feel very few but some students would have done this silly mistake also. That about top point they would have taken the moment without uh, focusing that hinge is at the bottom. Now let's start calculating this value. How do you calculate? We know that the best method to solve such questions is by drawing the force diagram. Force area or force volume if you talk about in 3D. Here the third dimension we don't have to bother about per meter we have to take. Right. So there are two ways. Either you take the width as 1 meter. Then also you can say that per meter I am doing the calculation. Or you just assume the width to be W. And then whatever calculation you are doing divide with W. So that you get the answer in per unit width. I have discussed about both the approaches. I am not repeating it here. Obviously easier one was taking it as 1 meter. Right? Why introduce one more variable? No? Just take it as 1 meter. Then whatever calculation we are doing is per meter only. So its width we have assumed as 1 meter. Got it? And now we will draw the pressure diagram. Right. So here it is varying like this, correct? It will be actually a volume, right? It will be a volume in 3D, but I am just showing you one side of that. So it is varying, it is 0, it is at the top, it is 0. It is starting from here, it is 0 means I am not considering the effect of this atmospheric pressure here. So here it is 0, it is increasing linearly, rho g h, it reaches up to a certain point here. And then in the second fluid, it will not continue in the same manner, right? It depends upon its density. It may vary in a slightly different manner. Rather, it may vary, wait, it may vary like this and then like this. So this is the area which will give you the total force on this side. But is question asking you total force? No, it is not. It is asking you total moment. But still we require that, right? Because force acting, force acting in the top part will be given by this area. So, we will find out this force and then multiply it with the suitable distance to find out that moment. Then we will find out the bottom area. Then we will find out the, the distance at which it will act and that moment we will add. Right? At this point of time, let me address one thing. Atmospheric pressure. 100 kilopascal. Sir, why you have not shown that here? Sir, that also would be acting. Na? If I assume that, then what will happen? this thing would be shifted here like this. Why? Because by here pressure is not going to be zero. Pressure have some value. Pressure would be having some value. How much value is equal to the atmospheric pressure and that will act throughout. That part of atmospheric pressure in a way is going to act throughout, right? Because it will act at the top, at the top. So its base value itself will increase. Its base value was zero. Its base value was zero initially, but its base value itself would increase if P ATM was acting. But the point to note here is that the other side is also open to atmosphere. Now, why? So, forces and its movement due to atmosphere from one side would be balanced by the other side. Again, something which has been discussed already. We have discussed such numerical already where P ATM was given in the question, which may confuse you that, array, do we have to consider P ATM? I have clearly discussed it in numerical itself that it will be balanced from both the sides. So no need to bother about P ATM. It is asking you the moment. Now to find out the individual areas and their moments, what do you do? Consider different areas. Let's say this is area 1. This is area 1. Okay. I am giving it different colors so that it is easier for you to see. Then there is area number, area number let's say 2. This is your area number 2 or maybe this also we can take as area number 2. We will decide that later on. Second area and then what do you have? You have third area. Why we are doing this? Are bhai, we will divide na, a complicated shape. We will divide into simple easy shapes. We will divide that into simple easy shapes because force is given by that area and to find out moment, you have to look at where the centroid of that area is lying. So if I choose a complicated shape, it will be difficult to find out its area and difficult to directly predict its centroid. 
That's why we break down into simple shapes. Again, something which I am sure all of you know, we have discussed this already in theory numericals. So now we have simple triangles and rectangles, correct? Let's discuss one by one their individual moment. All of them are trying to move it like this only, like this only in the same direction. So all of their moments eventually would be added up together. Now coming to the calculation, moment is equal to force, force multiplied by the distance. From where? From the hinge. This is the hinge. This is the hinge. Now there are multiple ways to find out the force, right? Either you can use the concept of area or the volume that this area or this volume, area and volume won't change, width is 1 now. So area of this multiplied by the width, multiplied by the width will give you the volume of that. It will be same because width is 1. So that's approach number 1, method number 1, where you can use the volume that will tell you the force and then you multiply that with the distance that will tell you the moment. In other words, you can use the center of pressure concept and you can find out directly how much would be the force, correct? So there are more than one ways to get the answer from here. These are the very basics, A, B, C, D of this. So that's why I am not discussing that. I will quickly tell you just this part. This is where you can commit mistake. That's what I will tell you. About the hinge, you have to take it. So 2 plus where the force is going to act here. That would be 1 by 3. From where? From here. Correct? Because it acts at the centroid of that triangle. Centroid of the triangle would be at one third distance from the base. That is why 2 plus one third of 1. So 2 plus 1 by 3 is the distance from the hinge where the net force is going to act. So that's why this is the case. I think some of the students would have forgotten to multiply with 2 to add 2, some would have taken the hinge above the top. Those are the possible silly mistakes. When you calculate the moment. Coming to the second area, let's say this is the second area. For that, how to find out moment? Same concept, force multiplied by the distance. Already we know the two methods to find out the force, use any of them. Distance would be here, center point. Because centroid of this rectangle is at the center. So distance would be 1, 2 by 2, right? Half of 2 is 1 only. So just use the formula to find out the force. But when you multiply with distance, it would be 1. That is the point to take care of. Coming to the third moment or the third area. Again, this is the point here. It will be acting as one third distance from the bottom. This is 2. So force will act at two third distance. Right? So distance would be 2 by 3. 2 by 3. That's it. Rest things we already know. Put the values. Add all of them. M3, M2 and M1. Right? Add all of them together. You will get the answer in Newton meter per uh, meter which you have to divide by 1000 to get the answer in kilo newton meter per meter. So if the values are correct, diagram is correct, then this is the answer approximately that you should be getting. Coming to the final, the final question which is I think which was about compressible flow. Again that was a very easy question. Let me show you that. This is the question from compressible flow. I think one of the most basic questions of compressible flow. Its concepts were discussed already in theory. I am sure you have seen this question in more than two courses. This same similar question, right? Because not because it was very great on our part, but because it is a very basic question of compressible flow, right? There is no point of boasting unnecessarily when question itself is not that difficult. So consider an isentropic flow of air, gamma is given, through a duct as shown. As shown, where is shown? Here it is shown. Okay, there's a duct, area is increasing along the flow. The variation in the flow across cross section areas negligible. In the flow, variation in the flow, okay, not in the flow properties. The flow condition at location 1 are given as follows. Pressure is given at location 1, this is location 1, this is location 2. At location 1, pressure is given, density is given, velocity is given and the duct cross section area at location 2 is given by a2 is twice of A1. Got it? So, it further says that which one of the following given statements about velocity U2 and pressure P2 at location 2 is true. Right? So, basically, it has given you a duct area is increasing. Correct? It has given you density P, U, A at 1 and same rho P, U, A at 2. And it is asking you the relationship between U and P. I think we have discussed all the four cases, all the four cases in this situation. What happens when depending upon the flow, whether it is a supersonic flow or not, how properties change with uh, respect to each other. It is not asking you density. In fact, if it has asked you density, that also you would have answered. Correct? So, how do you do that? Firstly, you have to find out the type of flow. 
whether this is acting actually as a nozzle or as a diffuser it depends upon its Mach number whether it is a supersonic flow or not let's quickly find that out now we know that speed of sound in a medium is given by root gamma rt in fact when we were deriving root gamma rt we firstly reached here and then i told you that p by rho is equal to rt so p by rho will was replaced by rt correct so this also is another expression of c correct in fact you don't remember the derivation then definitely you can move from here to here how p is equal to rho rt p by rho is equal to rt so rt would be replaced by p by rho why did we do that because by p was given value rho value was given right gamma value was given so if you put that value you would find out the speed of sound in this medium as 341.565 meter per second how much is its velocity right now its velocity is 400 but speed of sound is 341 clearly velocity is more than speed of sound correct so exact value you can find out by doing v by c it will give you 1.174 so clearly it's a supersonic flow right its velocity is more than the velocity of sound and for supersonic flow how is this behaving is this a diffuser or a nozzle now it's a nozzle correct and since it is now acting as a nozzle for supersonic flow velocity would increase which means that velocity at 2 would be more than velocity at 1 so this is gone this is gone velocity at 2 velocity at 2 is more than velocity at 1 and velocity is increasing what would happen with pressure it would decrease so pressure would decrease p2 will be less than p1 this is the correct option option d is the correct option right so we have discussed as i told you all the three four cases here in detail in the course so it's a very direct doable question directly from the theory that we have discussed already so this is the overview of fluid mechanics questions memory based from gate 2023 i am sure these questions did not trouble you a lot in exam you were able to handle those questions easily and uh, don't think as i am repeating again and again that if gate is easy any year your preparation was good because if gate comes difficult you think Are, i don't know anything i have to prepare properly but if gate comes easy you will be relaxed Are, i know everything so don't go into that mindset your attempt of gate 2023 may not reflect your actual level in a difficult exam which may be next year may be next to next year that is why don't become complacent relax mat ho jao don't think that are i know everything i have solved here five out of four question i have solved correctly here i am a champion in fluid mechanics don't think like that these are not champion questions okay